Um, what I'm going to try and do in the next 20 minutes is not take you through the whole story. We've got a booth downstairs. I'll be here all day. Um, so I'm happy to expand on any of the um, sort of the, the summary that I um, give over the next sort of 20 minutes or so. I don't want to go, you know, I don't want to intrude on the next presenter's time or anything like that. So I will be here all day. But I, will, I just want to give you a bit of a background on the company for those who haven't um, heard it before tell you a little bit about our business model and what the opportunity is uh, because my firm belief is when you come to these things you're not really interested in what we've done in the past. What you want to know as potential uh, investors and shareholders is what we're going to do in the next 12 months, next two years. So I'll try to focus on that. So we're an aircraft lessor. That is that we own commercial passenger aircraft, that's all we do, and we lease them over the long term <laughs> to airlines. That's all we do. The best analogy for our business and our business model is that buying an aircraft and leasing it out to an airline is a lot like buying a house and renting it out to a tenant. We use bank debt to, we go and find an asset, house in one case, plane in our case. We use bank debt to buy that aircraft. To buy that aircraft. We then lease it for very long periods, and we're talking 10 to 12 years, to an airline. And our business model is that that airline pays, uh, pays off that aircraft so that we own it outright about halfway through the, aircraft, the asset's life. So we own it outright and then it just generates pure profit after that. Now we only focus on commercial passenger aircraft and we have a further niche specialisation in that turboprop aircraft there which is a joint venture French-Italian um, product called an ATR 600, um, a very popular aircraft. Dominate, it has 85% market share in the regional turboprop um, um, aircraft space. If there's one thing that I'd want you to take away from my presentation, it's this, it's right now. We are an extremely high growth company Year on year, we've been growing at 30 plus percent. Over the next year, we're going to accelerate that to 40 percent growth. So that's me, finance director, saying here in public, we're going to grow by 40 percent. That's because it's already contracted. We're also, and this is extremely rare, and I don't think, please come and tell me afterwards if there's another company like that here at presenting today. We're very high, we got very high profits. Our net profit after tax margin is approaching 25%. Net profit after tax. 25 cents in every dollar that we get in the door is net profit after tax, which generates earnings, which makes the share price go up. And our share price has been doing very well. Most people are unfamiliar with the air finance business. Most people, in fact, don't know that today, every sec virtually every second plane that you've ever flown in is owned by a company like us. Just because it's got British Airways on the tail doesn't mean that British Airways owns it. And in fact, we're, because we're responsible for, for the delivery of so many aircraft, one in every two aircraft, we're intrinsic to the airline industry. To be clear about what we do, all we do is own the plane and we get rent for that plane. We don't supply fuel, we don't supply pilots or anything like that. The airlines do the insurance, they insure the planes for us. They do all the repairs and maintenance as well. So all we do is every month get a rent check for the use of our plane. Very simple business model. Airlines over the past 15 years have haven't had the easiest time. High fuel prices, go back to 9-11, you go back to the GFC, you look at the Asian debt crisis, you look at bird flu, you look at the Ebola crisis six months ago. All of these things were going to kill the airline industry. But over the last 15 years, the simple fact is that the number of passengers has doubled in the past 15 years when it's been really tough to run an airline. They're resilient. They're always there. Some go bust, sure, but they're always replaced by another one. They all, and they all obviously need planes. Our assets are great assets. They're some of the most heavily regulated in the world. Not only do the airlines look after them, but you have federal aviation bodies making sure that they're airworthy. So a short synopsis on the company. As I said, we focus on narrow body jets and turboprops. That's 
by definition, that's the smaller planes, uh, the smaller jets and the, and the turboprops. That's when you get in the plane, there's one aisle down the middle, and there's seats on either side. So not the big jets, not the A380s, not the, 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 the fancy exotic jets. We just deal with the workhorses, the taxi cabs of the airline industry. We have got 29 planes in the fleet today. Um, we've delivered six planes already since July this year. We have a June financial year end. Now, 19 of those are the turboprops. These are photos of all our actual assets, or some of our assets, should I say. And we also have 10 jets. Now, that's great. That, they're worth half a billion dollars. And we're going to generate about $60 million worth of revenue this year and a lot of profit. Great. Fantastic. But what are we going to do in the next year? That's what I think, that's the most important thing I can, and the, the second most important thing I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you right now. Over the next year, we're going to deliver a minimum of six planes that is going to grow our fleet in the balance sheet by 40%. And that'll lead to similar increases in revenue and earnings. What are, who, what are those planes and who are they for? This is the um, growth map here. I hope you can still all hear me. We're going to deliver two brand new Airbus A321 jets, like that, to Thomas Cook. They're delivered in February and March next year. We just signed a deal uh, with Flybe uh, to deliver four of the turboprop planes over the next year as well. And they've leased them on to Scandinavian Airline Services. But each of those deals is worth about $100 million in planes each in assets that will go on our balance sheet. The contracts are signed, the deposits are paid, the aircraft are being financed now. The growth will come, and I'm happy to say, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not doing anything wrong here. Because it's contracted, I can tell you we're going to, you know, minimum 40% growth. All we're waiting for now is these planes to be made and delivered. We're also going to um, deliver another $100 million of planes next year, at least, as well. So I said we've got $500 million worth of assets today. Just the Thomas Cook and the Flybe deal alone are worth another $200 million in assets. So that's, your that's where I, you know, you want to know where the 40% growth is? That's the calculation that I'm using. That's what, we're going to, that's what we're going to add in the next year. We're all based in Singapore. The company's based in Singapore for tax reasons. We've got a government-mandated 10% tax rate. Because we are extremely profitable, we need to operate in a low tax domicile. We're listed, however, on the main board of the London Stock Exchange. 55 million shares on issue. And we've got a market cap of about 80 million pound. We've got assets that are worth more than that already. We obviously think we're undervalued, but I'm sure every company you see today is going to tell you they think they're undervalued. I'll tell you a little bit about our, our key focus and our key plane. That's it there, the turboprop. Um, it's, uh, it's used for short journeys, 300 to 500 miles, which represents 30% of all air, um, aircraft journeys. Um, they're in limited supply. They only make 80 of them a year. They're sold out for three and a half years. They command great lease rates, and we have industry-leading lease yields. You know, that's the amount, of lease, uh, the amount of rent you get per plane. We've got industry leading. We get, on average, across our whole balance sheet, about 13.7% yield on our assets. Really important. But that plane's super popular. It's operated by about three quarters of the world's airlines. It operates in 90 countries. It's been around for 25 years. Um, uh, and then there's nothing out there to replace it. As I said, it has 85% of the turboprop market share. So it's economics 101. It's in short supply and it's in high demand. And we've got access to it. That's um, a list of our customers there. Our biggest customer is Virgin Australia. We started off in Australia supplying planes to a West Australian airline. Then it got bought by Virgin. We supplied a lot of planes to Virgin. We've evolved the business over the last couple of years and we're now delivering planes globally. Very important to note, we, in our industry, there's two key metrics that you need to focus on to uh, compare us with our, our competitors. That's how old the, uh, the, the, the fleet of aircraft is and how long the leases are that are attached to them. Again, we're industry leading. The ATRs that I just mentioned, which represent about 80% of our balance sheet, their average age is 1.7 years old and the leases attached to them have on average seven and a half years still to go. So we don't have to do it. If we stop work today, we've got seven and a half years of the exact same earnings we're doing today, but we're not. We're actually going to grow by another 40%. And those planes we're going to deliver this year are all brand new 
and they have an average of eight years um, um, lease attached to them. So those metrics are going to go in the right direction. I won't dwell on this slide. This just simply says that the aviation sector is growing extremely quickly. Asia Pacific is the leading area of that. We're being based in Singapore and, and having delivered six of our last seven planes to the Asia Pacific region, we're well placed to capitalise on that growth. But it's a very large industry. 1,800 new planes are delivered to, 17 or 1,800 planes are d delivered every year to the airline industry. You know, we're only, you know, we grow by 40% by just delivering six of those 1,800. Gives you an, I just want you to understand how big our opportunity is moving forward. So we're already the second largest lessor of turboprops in Asia Pacific. I've mentioned the four planes with Flybe that we're, we're, we're delivering. What I haven't mentioned is this. We've got 29 planes today. You saw that slide that said we're going to deliver 12 new planes over the next two years. We then have a further 22 delivery options that we'll also add to our fleet from 2017 onwards over those few years. So we can double the size of our fleet with the orders that we already have and the options that we have for new planes. Double the size of our fleet. We've got half a billion dollars worth of assets today. We're also expanding in the jet space. We, you know, that Thomas Cook deal that we announced six months ago is the first sale and leaseback, which is a very important skill set. That's how, most, how lessors buy most of their planes. It's from the airlines through a sale and leaseback. Our business model is really simple, and I'm just about done now, so um, I haven't got long uh, to go. The, um, we like long lease terms, 10 to 12 years, as I said. We, we borrow about 75 or 80% of the value of the plane, and because the lease term runs for 10 or 12 years, we're able to amortise that debt fully to zero over that first lease, over 10 or 12 years. But the plane lives for 25 years. So at that point in time, we don't have to pay interest expense on it. And interest expense is the biggest P&L item that we have. Even though we still make 25%, we, you know, we have a big interest bill, obviously, because we've got $500 million of assets and we've got $370 million worth of debt. So we are leveraged. <coughs> As I mentioned the lease yield, so with a leveraged company, what you want to know now is probably how we mitigate the risks of carrying leverage. Well, we choose the good assets, the assets that are sold out that every airline uses. Our biggest risk is an airline going bust and not paying the lease. At that point in time, we have the right to go and grab our plane and either sell it or place it with another airline. So what asset do you want to do that with? Well, you want to do it with the asset that every other airline uses. That's why we like the workhorses. We've been diversifying our airline credits we amortise our debt down to zero over the first um, lease term. We fix our interest rates. We'd have less interest. We'd have more profit and pay less interest if we had floating interest rates. But over long lease terms, we don't want to take that risk, so we fix our interest rates uh, over the term of the lease. And we do everything in US dollars, so we don't have much foreign currency risk either. I won't dwell on this. It's 30% growth year on year. You see that to the top line, you see that to the bottom line. This year we're going to accelerate that growth. And if you look at the balance sheet, we tripled the company, tripled the size of the company in the last four years, and we're going to continue to grow. And these are our peers. You have, you have, all, if you look at all these, these are all listed in the US because there's no one really competes with us. In, there's, no, there's no peers in, in, in the UK that are listed. But if you look up all of these, We've got better debt metrics. We've got lower PE. They're trading on a much higher premium of net asset value. So we think we're undervalued. As we build scale, as we continue to grow, we think we're going to be re-rated. We're trading at a PE of seven now. That's why we think we're undervalued. We're well placed on the ATR. We're active in the jet space. We're doing eight planes in the next 12 months. It'll, we'll grow our fleet by... Uh, a minimum of 40%. Our, met our <coughs> key metrics, the fleet age and lease term, are going in the right direction. We've got a very simple business model, and all we've done, we bought one plane, made it profitable, and then repeated it 29 times. And we're going to repeat it another eight times over the next 12 months. We've got strong visibility and earnings, um, strong credit met metrics, we mitigate most of the risks, we're very risk averse, and we've actually, and this is rare as well, we've got a history of managing profitability and growth. We're not trying to get there, we've done it successfully. And all we're going to do is keep repeating it, and keep repeating it. 
That's all I've got to say. I think I'm out of time, am I? Great.